testing. Check the mic, test rock, 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 rock. Check the mic, test what? Yeah, what? Yeah. Sexy. Oh, you need to teach me how you do this. Uh... Morning. Morning. You go, all right, you go all the way down there, and then you whiz up. And just when you catch yourself in it, start going good. And when you're at the top, just go morning. <laughs> That's it. Don't let go of the camera, though. Right, you're and you go. Gonna, no, you do it. You're going to do it with me. Okay, okay. I'll do it with you. Ready? Oh, the battery's about to die. Hold on. I got, I got another one. I got another one. <laughs> good morning. It's Sunday. We have one more day before the detailed clinic. So we're in here getting the shop ready. And uh, while you're here, we're going to be doing a weekend wash video. I'm excited. Weekend wash on the Eman's car. Shh. Let's do it. No, Alan. No. Welcome to the video, everybody. We're going to be doing a weekend wash from, with Mr. Alan Medcraft. We're going to be washing uh, Mr. E-Man's. E-Man's car. This Thank is, you. I don't know what year it is, but it's a BMW 323i manual. And it's this lovely, not a hatchback. It is a... We call it an estate. Estate? Would you call it a sedan? Sedan? No, we call this a... An American term. Mm. Cut to the wash. <laughs> <laughs> Wagon. wagon! 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 Station wagon! Station wagon! It's a wagon! Ugh. It's still early. <laughs> it's not, it's five o'clock at night. <laughs> in this video, we're working with Mr. Alan Medcraft from AM Details, located in the United Kingdom. Alan has been in business since 2010 and since has started a product line with the same AM Details name. So in this episode of The Weekend Wash, we're cleaning this dirty BMW and learning more about Alan and his products. Make a cup of tea time! Mm. Oh. All right, Alan, we got a dirty car here. Nice! The E-Man's car. What are we doing? The full wash? Door yeah, shuts? Yeah, we're gonna wash it. Wheels, the whole lot. I wanna play with all your things. So what are, what are these each? Oh, you wanna you wanna know what these are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. All right. So this is these 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 soapy soap. Uh, we have a PNS soap running through there. This is nice because it makes it all foamy. ABC. This is a Meguiar's non-acid wheel cleaner. Oh, nice. Uh, this is Meguiar's Iron Decon. Nice. Through the system. Uh, this is Meguiar's Hypershine. So you would use that as like a. Air. How would you use Hypershine? Uh, the Hypershine is for the tires. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. When Tire dressing. Dressing. Tire dressing. So that's that. And then we got a little applicator pad here. Nice. So uh, first thing we need to do is we need to fill up the buckets. So what are we using? What are we using? You want to use, use the two uh, buckets? Bubbles, right? Two buckets, some AM bubbles. AM bubbles. Let's fill them up. Fill them up. I like to fill them with water first before the bubbles goes in. Your bubbles, sir. Thank you. So basically, yeah, I fill the buckets up first with water uh, for AM soap. What's, what's different about this soap? Luxury car wash. Yeah, so it is all about just giving you the lubrication, uh, a little bit of cleaning power. There's nothing fancy in there. There's going to be nothing left behind. So it's just a really good luxury soap. It's all about the lubrication. So no waxes, no, no waxes. none of that bullshit. So that's why when I was talking about this, I'm going to teach you a technique for putting shampoo into your buckets, but it doesn't really matter with mine. You can just give it a good glug. But you'll notice I'm filling the bucket with water first. And the reason we fill it with water first is if you were using like a Gion product or you're using a product that maybe has, um, you know, it has a cool additive in it. If you get that ratio too strong, you can create a lot of problems in your wash. So if you fill it with water first and you're actually going to measure it, like imagine, oh geez, to try and use American, it says like put 100 mil into one gallon or what would you say, 16 ounces to one gallon, something like that. I'm so sorry, Americans. Um, then you can put the, the five gallons in and then you can put the exact amount in and then you've got the correct ratio and then just grab your pressure washer, a quick boop, and you've got your bubbles. 
Bubbles, bubbles. But first, the car, it's dirty. It's dirty. A lot of people on the channel complain. Why don't you clean a dirty car? The car is already clean. <laughs> it's dirty. Because it's the only car we've got. The rest of the cars haven't arrived yet. I want to use uh, the AM foam first. AM foam? Yeah. yeah let's do it. So what's the difference? Why would I use AM foam or AM bubbles? I mean, is that a different process? Yes, different process, different product. So let's say this one's all about the lubrication. Uh, it's got a little bit of cleaning power in there. But the foam is all about contactless cleaning. So that is 100% about cleaning. You'll notice if you use it as a shampoo, uh, it doesn't feel as silky, it doesn't feel as smooth, it feels a lot thinner. And it's okay. just because it's all about cleaning. So you're gonna use your media when, you're, when we're using the shampoo to help pull the dirt off. So what we're gonna do, if you were to do it the AM Details way, which is a little bit longer, is we're gonna wash this whole car down with just pressure washer. Use the citrus APC first. So we're gonna use the all-purpose cleaner. It'll tackle the bugs and the hard grime. Then the foam will go on. So the reason we do that is citrus will go on first. Time versus power, it can work a lot better than a snow foam can. So it's gonna go and rip all that out. Pressure wash it off. About the time it takes you to go around the car. Then when the snow foam goes on, the foam only has to work then on what couldn't come off by a pressure washer, couldn't come off by citrus, and you've got the long dwell time for it to work on that tougher stuff. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the APC. Yeah. And you I'm want me to pressure wash it down first? Yeah, let's pressure wash it down. Oh, nice. Hey. Ready for artistic uh, pressure washing? Yeah. Um, okay. I was thinking about. Ah, oh, fail. What happened? There she is. Yeah? yeah, we should do the wheels first. Is it warm water you're using? It is warm water. Isn't nice. that nice? Do you run that through a filter system or anything? Uh, so we have a hot water heater. Um, the water is really, really nice here. We've got Lake Michigan water, so we don't have to, I mean, we've tested the water. Beautiful. And there's not very many minerals in the water, so it's, we don't have to do anything to it, which nice. is great. I'm not jealous at all. I <laughs> am <laughs> Wheels. AM Wheels is an acid-free wheel cleaner, meaning it's safe for all types of wheels. It's a great product for maintenance and does a fantastic job at cutting through all the brake dust and road grind. All the products we're using here in this video can be found at Car Supplies Warehouse. And if you type in the code AM20 at checkout, you're going to receive a 20% discount off the whole AM Details product line. Stop! Stop! None of your toys want to work. Why doesn't the toy want to work? You gotta wait for it to click. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, how did you get into making products? Uh, that was an accident. So we had the company already, and the name was originally meant to be, or it is, AM Details Detailing Solutions. And I was hoping to be the one-stop shop for everything detailing in the Highlands. It's quite a remote place for postage reasons in Scotland, so. I would have customers come into the shop and they would do their, have their service and then they would be like, oh, I'm wanting to, um, how do I maintain this or care for it myself afterwards? So we were buying in like poor boys and all those sort of products and we were making no margin on them. So then uh, I just accidentally bumped into a few guys and they were like, here, we can help you white label, help you manufacture your own sort of stuff. And that's where we went from. So we have one, two, three, three, 
Well, it was four, but now there's just three uh, manufacturers for the range. Some of it we even do in-house uh, at the shop, so it's quite cool. Very cool. Very cool. What are you looking for? Uh, some tools. So there's two other buckets Shall on the I side. Watch over here. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple other buckets. I got some wheel woolies. Perfect. Thank you. Everything that you need in there. So I have a question for you. Yes. Why the second shop? Why this one? Why lumbar? Why do I? Why do we have two shops? Yeah. What made you want to come into this shop? Um. Well, well, we originally started with one shop, and. You know, it just started with me. It just kind of snowballed too. So the original with Chicago the Grove, yeah, the original shop was actually not far from here, probably seven miles away from here. We started in the car wash. Yeah. Um, started in the car wash, and we were there for probably I don't know four months, and the thing was like it was full. It was packed full because we had some dealership cars, and it was only a two bay shop, so. The landlord that we were renting from was like, hey, you can't, we have 15 cars in the parking lot. You guys got a two-bay shop. This is ridiculous. Yeah. So he was like, you know, wasn't happy with us. And then we found another shop down the road and ended up going there. It was 4,000 square feet. Thought this place is huge, you know, and, and got in there and, and quickly filled that shop up and we're doing our <laughs> thing and everything. And we didn't, we didn't mean to have two shops. We weren't looking for a second shop. What happened? was actually our landlord, we got in a little bit of an argument with our landlord, and we thought we were gonna get kicked out. So we're like, well shit, what are we gonna do? Let's come up with a backup plan. Let's figure out if we get kicked out, where we're gonna go. So we started looking at shops, and we found the shop up in Glenview that we really liked, perfect space, had drainage, everything we wanted in a shop. And we started going through the, the numbers and, and through with the commercial real estate agent, and ended up saying, yeah, let's get the shop. Within that time, when we said, yeah, let's get the shop, we're gonna move it to Glenview, we actually made up with our landlord. And so we had both these shops going at the same time and we're thinking, okay, what do we do, what do we do? And I kind of looked at Greg and said, well, why don't we just try to run both of them at the same time? We've got two of us, my business partner, Greg, I'm like, we can figure this out, we can do two at the same time. And it was scary. So me and Greg kind of went up to the new shop and I remember like the first day we were open, the first week, we didn't have any employees that worked at that shop. It was me and Greg washing cars. And the first weekend there, we did like 12 cars, just me and Greg. <laughs> and we're like, all right, maybe this will work. <laughs> we can do this. So we hired some guys and slowly built it up. And yeah, that's how kind of two shops were born. We weren't, we weren't looking for two shops necessarily. It just kind of yeah. happened like accident, kind of like how AMD yeah. tail started, you know? That's so super cool. That's it. These have come up nice with just the wheels, but like you, I'm gonna iron these because the E-Man, you might know this, he's been looking after me the past two days with some little trips and ticks. Tricks and tips. So, um, so AM iron. I'm okay. gonna do him. Uh, so you can see the faces have come up real nice, but we still got kind of like a little brown staining in here. And it's mostly just going to be the, the metal deposits starting to surface rust on here. So. so AM iron is a very unique color. I love it when you <laughs> yeah. spray it on the wheels. So it's like fluorescent yellow. And then um, it smells like Fruit Loops. Do you have Fruit yeah. Loops? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it actually, um, this is the fourth reversion of the iron to the iron. I had an original product and then I don't know why I did it. I thought business will be easy and the chemical game will be easy. So I've invested some big money in trying to make an iron that didn't smell. And uh, we had a blue one with coconut in it. And basically all I was trying to do was hide the, hide the bad smell with scents, which was the wrong idea. Yeah. Um, so as I say, I work with a few chemists. When I went to one of them, he was like, no, we need to kill the smell, but you can't do it in the bottle. So that's when we have the product we have now. So you pop the cap off and smell it, you'll get the eggy kind of phosphorus smell that you get. Yeah. But when we spray it, um, it kills the smell as you spray it, as it gets atomized. That's crazy. Cool. Cause that's, I mean, that's the big takeaway that I got from your product. That we're is having it, a it conversation. <laughs> yeah. We're having a conversation and we're quite, you know. 
<laughs> and it and still does the same thing too. I mean, it still turns purple. You see, it's yeah, the, the, the chemical's still in there, the reaction's still happening, so the small acidic reaction is now happening and it's doing everything it needs to do to start to try and dissolve. So the acidic reaction happens and that allows the surface of the paint to heat up a little bit. So that, no, that sounds a little bit crazy, but that's why, you know, you shouldn't really be spraying iron removers on carbon ceramics and stuff is um, they cause this small acidic reaction so that the paintwork heats up, expands, and allows the bit of metal to come out and then starts to dissolve it. And that's when you see the reaction. And you're seeing as well, where the reaction's only happening where the metal is. Yeah. So this is all perfectly safe here. This isn't doing an acidic reaction on his wheel, only where the metal is reacting. So yeah. a lot safer way to wash. And yes, it took us a little longer, but if you're doing it as a regular maintenance on like your big automatic cars that you might have here in America, it's really gonna look after your coat and it's really gonna look after your wheels iron fallout remover you know that this is usually some really stinky stuff if you want an iron remover that doesn't stink pick up a bottle and smell it for yourself this stuff is great okay yeah there's a so it's really turning purple. it's a good reaction and, and like in the the video we did before i like to use microfiber to help pull this out now see some people don't like the fact it's a slower reaction but it's just because it's a more viscous product yeah. Uh, but it's sticking on the wheels. Like up here, it's not running away. It's still there. Yeah. Or sometimes it with is. The, it's like yeah. gel. Sometimes with the thinner products, they just run clean off the car. And so how long do you typically want to let this sit on the wheel in? Well, the most fantastic thing you have is this place. Yeah. The biggest. It's not gonna dry. Yeah, the biggest issue with iron fallout removers is them drying out, uh, which comes with the heat. The heat flashes off all the moisture that's in there, and then you're left with acidic, you know, quite harsh chemicals on there. And that's where the damage happens, the white chalkiness, the issues. So in here, you could leave this on as long as you want. Interestingly, when I was in uh, China and they have indoor bays like this, they won't even do contact washing. So what they do is they spray the iron on and just leave it and go through their whole process. And then they just use a hose, not even a pressure wash, just a hose in their hands. And they just do this to take it off and that's it. And then when you do an iron hit afterwards, because I thought, no way, there was next to no iron on the wheels. If they're doing it with their hands, it's kind of contact, isn't well, it? That's what I said. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Like, like where's your tools and stuff? And they're just like, using hoses with no gloves, but it's because they have facilities like this indoors. Yeah. All right, let's get the wheels done. Oh yeah, no, it's, uh, I've been through hell, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You look it, dude, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I've had plenty of days where I, you know, it's been three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, I'm still working, I'm still pumping out cars, I'm still doing this, you know, I've, I've been, it's to the point where I've been so stressed out and burnt out, I've been, I've been in all those places, and um, it, the most difficult thing in a business is employees, yeah. and finding the right ones, and we've been through a ton of employees, and this is the most asked question that I get from other detailing businesses out there, like, how did you grow? How did you get employees? I mean, it was, I mean, it's simple and it's hard at the same time. Uh, you know, it's one employee at a time, slowly replace yourself, um, whether it's just being in the prep bay or detailing or paint correction or working in the front office or doing whatever you're doing, you gotta slowly replace yourself and find that right guy. But it, it's, it's hard at the same time too, because finding those right guys are hard. So yeah, I've been through it all with employees. We've gone through, many, many, many employees to find the right ones. and um, It's a great team. I've enjoyed spending a couple of days here already. They are. Yeah, we're blessed to have a What's great next? team. What's uh, next? We're going to do some uh, APC and some so we're foam, gonna do the right? Work now? Yeah, so yes. what we do is we rinse down, we do APC. Iman's car actually looks pretty clean considering the salt that you have here. Yeah. Um, so of course you would make this more efficient in a pump sprayer or you would use it in one of your, you know, uh, cool adaptive systems here. In the UK, we're really bad for bugs on the front end or this kind of salt on the bottom. So you're just gonna, once we're ready to go, and do like a flick in action, just like this. And it's just gonna tackle flick this. Flick of the wrist. Flick of the wrist. Flick of the wrist. Tackle the products down here for you. You got yeah, a this. nice wrist action. You must have a lot of practice with Dude, that. I've been doing this for <laughs> as long as you. <laughs> uh, so this is just gonna, you spray this on the bottom and it helps yeah, all those high break up the road grind. What I say. So you imagine along the bottom, your wing mirror where we get the high impact, yes. you know, the windscreen line. You know, do you get like bug season here in the summer? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah. all the front end where the bugs are, this is incredible at tackling through those bugs. Um, so that'll just help break down all those bug remnants. And yeah, so you do this. Uh, one of the cool things was um, when I was in China, the translation was um, the bugs feces will melt on the varnish. That was the translation that the guy said in Chinese. 
to a Chinese politician, and then that Chinese politician translated it into English into that, which was the bug's feces will melt on the varnish. <laughs> All right. But yeah, so I'll just do that little half bit, show you going around here. Oh no, I'll do the whole car. Um, where we would do it, contactless washing. And the reason is it's only gonna take the amount of time it takes to go around the car for this to work. Because uh, people have that conversation all the time. You'd have seen it. Is snow foam worth it? What's it all about? Blah, blah, blah. It depends on your snow foam. You've got a pH neutral snow foam. It's gonna do very little cleaning. But do you need that? If you've got it on a well-protected car, do you need to be having you know, a strong cleaning agent? On a car like this, we don't know if it's protected or not. Yeah. So um, we're gonna do the APC first to cut through this and it'll go through it really fast. So that way, when the snow foam goes on, it's then got all the time you're gonna leave snow foam on to eat through the stuff that pressure washing an APC couldn't get through. You know what I'm saying? So you think about it in stages. Okay. Whereas I think a lot of detailers try and just do it in a one-er and they're trying to get their snow foam to in essence go through three layers of dirt. You know, if we call it three layers, the water layer, the APC layer, the foam layer. Yeah. You're trying to get foam to go all the way through that. Right. Sometimes you do this and you're like, I don't need to use snow foam. There isn't that tougher, it's been stuck on for a couple of weeks film. I just wanted to cut through the salt. Okay, um, and speaking of snow foam, hello. Look, we got your AM foam. So what, what's the, what are the steps here? You usually spray I the would then spray APC this first. Off. So you yeah. pressure wash it and then do the foam. Yeah, when I pressure wash it, okay. I'm gonna do it from the bottom up. Bottom when up? I, when I do foam and APC. Yeah, I know, and this flips everyone and they're like, what? Well, from the, you're from the UK, you drive on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, we do everything the wrong way. You steer so your wheels why, on the wrong side. Why not go so, bottom up? But, <laughs> okay. um, I'll try to show you. So I guess basically, it makes sense. It makes sense as in, so we've got our chemical on here now. Yeah. Uh, the camera's are on here, so look, we'll, we'll be specific to camera. Hello, YouTube. Um, and if you start pressure washing from here now, right, you start pressure washing, and then me and you are shooting a YouTube video, and we're having a discussion, you ask a nice question, I turn and talk to you. The water's gonna keep running down this car. Yeah. It's gonna grab that APC and just pull it off the car. Lots of people believe that APC, like snow foam, has grabbed the dirt, pulled it up into itself, and you just need to rinse it off the car. It's not, it's, it's on the dirt, it's softening it up. To get it off, this takes it off. The mm -hmm. pressure washer going through the APC, through the dirt, hitting the paint, pulls it off. So if we go bottom up, and if this was a lot dirtier, sorry, you can't see it in shop, but if we did your golf, yeah. you would see the actual blast line where I blasted. So, Let's imagine you're at a car show or you're somewhere where you don't have all this stuff, but you've got a bottle of APC in the back of your car and your garage pressure washer. You know, the, I don't know if you have them here, like you put one dollar in and you give you like two yeah. minutes. Oh, yeah. Put your dollar in, rinse it down, spray APC on, put your dollar in. You've only got two minutes. Yeah. You want to bottom up and you can see where you've been and you won't leave that horrible triangle of mist when you turn up at the show. That's the reason to do bottom up. And some people are like, well, you're going up to just come down again and yada yada. And yes, efficiency is money, but I've allowed for that in my pricing. Yeah. So. All right, you pressure wash that. I'm gonna hook up the foam nice. cannon. Dude, you wanna come and, uh... hello the YouTubes. You wanna come and see this like so you can see the bottom up yeah. technique? It's yeah. really working well. I don't know if you wanna bring a camera with you for it. I really want to show your, your, your viewers the power of using okay. a part like this. If you shoot from over there, you can see. Oh, yeah. I've been along here already. Look, it's all gone. And we've already pressure washed this. So this isn't us saying, oh, it's just a dirty car. that you We've already pressure washed this car. So the APC is now cutting through this grime. Yeah. We start from the bottom. So I'll do like right, right from the bottom so you can see the definitive line. So you can actually see where I've been. Yeah. See what I mean? So if you come from the bottom up, I just go where the dirt is again. Then we have a conversation, I know where I've been. See, yeah. this is why I do bottom up. Cool. And then the stuff that's left, the foam will pick up and then the shampoo will get. Maybe you're not so backwards after all. <laughs> Okay, snow foamed. Snow foam's on. 
make a cup of tea time or for you there probably coffee you don't drink English tea here in America do you <laughs> okay so we still haven't actually rubbed on the car yet nope with a, a mitt I wait to see how so clean we did it the is. APC we did the snow foam do we start washing now so that's up to you right that is completely up to you I would rinse this off yeah well to be honest we've seen how clean it was so you could just use this as your uh, your your shampoo effect and use your wash media and just wash this down but I pressure wash this on off again from the bottom up then I do two buckets if it's a customer's car, you know, you're looking specifically at a black car or you're a business and the customers paid you to, to provide that service. But if you're someone at home, you can decide, do you want to just now use your wash media and wash this because the APC cut through the majority of the grime? Or are you wanting to uh, pressure wash this off from the bottom up and then do your two bucket <laughs> method media afterwards? All right, well, let's uh, pressure wash this off and then uh, give her a the two bucket of good scrub down. Nice. Cue the music. Boom, boom, ba -dum. Boom, boom, boom. I'm rinsing it down. I noticed this car. Ooh, look at that. Oh, there's not a lot going on there. Uh, no. <laughs> so should we do some decontamination? Yeah, we, we should. Well, I mean, I don't know how much time we have, but uh, what can we do if we don't have a whole lot of time? You see this and how do, how's it feel? Okay, so if you see this and you want to be really gash, gash, does that translate well? And you want to be a little bit lazy or you don't have much time, then uh, you could literally just quick detailer this just remember though, you're adding protection on top of contamination. So you're potentially halving or massively reducing the durability of the product you're gonna use, whether it's gonna be something like C2, our quick detailer, or you're just gonna stick a wax on it. But really, we could probably do a good detar session, the solvent and it will rip the majority out. We probably don't have time to do an iron session, but we could do clay bar as well if you wanted. Well, let's do... It. Maybe we just do a section. Should we just like do this yeah. side? And then let's we, can do one have, section. Uh, we can have Philip finish E-Man's car. After yeah. the video. <laughs> Sinking it in for ya. All right, we just got done the wash. We noticed the car is very flat, meaning there's no hydrophobic properties to it, meaning it doesn't have any protection, whether it's a wax or a ceramic coating. And for the sake of time, this is E-Man's car. And I love E-Man, but I don't want to detail his entire car. So we're going to take two panels here, just the two doors, and we're going to show you some other AM detail products that you can use on your car to make it look beautiful. Ready, Alan? I'm ready. First step, we gotta decontaminate it, right? That's we right. felt the car. If you feel it, let's see if you can hear it. Get real close. Oh, you can hear it. You can totally hear it. We can see it too. Oh yeah, okay. So, focus. That's tar. Definitely tar. There's probably a lot of... Uh, There's gonna be a lot of iron. So, can we, what do you use, you, for, you use a tar remover first? So I use a tar use? remover first before iron. Before iron? Yeah, and then okay. I would do a clay. The reason I use a tar first is the iron removers can sometimes start to break down tar because the chemicals that are in them. You might be thinking, woohoo, two birds and one stone. But if it doesn't melt it down completely, then when you get it in your microfiber, you're just going to be rubbing a small stone around. Okay. Yeah, so I use the tar remover first. And I literally okay. just spray on like this. And the cool thing with doing this, because a lot of people put it into their microfiber and then try and find the tar and rub it, you'll be there all day. So if you do this, and we work our way down the panel. And bottom up. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be bottom up. <laughs> it's funny how everybody does everything yeah, just a little things. bit different, you know? It's just habits. You know? And it doesn't matter. In the class this week, and I want to talk to people about that, like yeah. everybody does something a little bit different. There's no right or wrong here. Yes. The final results are what we're going after. You get the same end result, but then you might see something and go, hey, I want to take that little technique. I can understand why you're doing that, and then yeah. you'll adjust yours. You know, I love that about the industry, but you see oftentimes on Facebook, everybody just kind of bashing yeah. each other for the way they, they do really, things. Really do. I hate that. 
So I'm now, I've got the product here, I'm gonna wipe. And when I'm wiping, I'm looking through the wipe. It's something I like to tell people to do, is look through the wipe. Because it's a lot easier to see. Um, when you wipe like this in a silver, it's not easy to see, but we've left like a film of tar remover on here. And if there is a bit of tar, it'll sit high and you can just go back and pay some attention to it really quick rather than having to do a whole new tar session. So I'm just gonna prime my, prime this up a little bit more. There we go. And tar goes everywhere, you don't want it to go, which means it's gonna go under the handles, under in here, everywhere you don't want tar to go, it will be. So pay attention to those areas. Do the wipe and you can still see that tar spot hasn't gone from the first wipe, but if I leave it, it would dry. But now I know it's there, I can just do another little wipe. And it's away. Look through the wipe. All right, so I'll quickly whiz through this. Drop the beats. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful beat. Okay, next is iron. Yeah. Iron? Yeah, so just a quick rinse. Quick rinse? Yeah, and whip the iron on there. Quick rinse and iron. Quick, I'm gonna quick rinse quince. it. Quick okay, quince. so I'm gonna rinse it and then I'll spray the iron. Flick your wrist. Flick it. You know, I don't really spray out of bottles much. I, <laughs> I haven't had the <laughs> wrist action practice like you. This kind of sucks. Just like the wheels, you want this product to sit for a few minutes and let the product work and dissolve away any iron particles embedded in the paint surface. You can do the same thing again where, you know, if you look through the wipe, if there was quite a large obvious bit of iron, you'll still see it. And then uh, you can just scrub at it. Another thing I like about our, um, our iron remover is it does sud up, you know, it's the cleaning agent and it does like acting like a shampoo. Clay, super soft, fine abrasive clay bar. It is super, super soft. Water as a lubricant is the minimum you need to use. If you want to use a dedicated clay lubricant, you can. But uh, what we find is when you're just using it with water, it like creates its own like emulsion and it just runs on that and loves it. Into your hand, light back and forth motion. I can feel this lifting it off already. So what I do yeah, is I have I want the, to feel it after we did that. Yeah, I okay, have it my, feels a lot better. Well, I have the palm of my you hand. Can still feel. There you go. Look. Yeah. I have the palm of my hand on the paintwork when I'm claying. So yeah. if you look, I'm, I'm claying like this. So I'm in the smooth bit, and then I push forward. If my hand feels palm of the hand feels nice and smooth, great. If it's still rough, I just come back, and it's the little check I do so that you know you got everything. If we just do this top bit here. And what's the, why just water? Why can't, I mean, obviously you can use, you can use a clay course. lubricant or, or soap, which is normal. But you can see it doing right. it. See how it creates like its own little lubricant? Makes but it, and it doesn't stick at all. I mean, is that the, is there anything special about that clay bar? It's just the makeup of the clay bar. It's one of the things I wanted to try and specify. And uh, they managed to do it for us. And there it is, the AM clay bar still is only one of the only ones. Now I like this clay bar because you don't get nearly as much marring as some of the clay bars that I use. Yes. And um, so we use it, we use it, we have a couple different clay bars. We use this one most of the time. Um, and we do a lot of new cars, so that's what I like to use because they're not that uh, full of contaminants. But if we have a, a different one, we'll go to an aggressive clay bar and just, yeah. and just hammer it out. But that thing, <laughs> you're gonna make sure you do paint correction after you yeah, use that 100%. Type of clay bar. And I usually make sure, I have a bigger one than this. So the bar comes in 200 gram bar and I chop it into 50 gram pieces, so just yeah. four pieces. But if we're doing a BMW like this, uh, I would probably use a 100 gram piece and just put it in the palm of my hand and go. Yeah. Let's go big flat panels at this. You can literally just yeah. 
go at it. Before, you did have to be more precious with your clay bar, you know, when you're using the aggressive ones and stuff. But honestly, with our clay bar, we've just learned you can actually be terrible. It sounds quite lazy and it's really forgiven to the home user. So they can just get their hand onto it, especially for efficiency. And a clay, I mean, this is a pretty quick process. I've seen some comments and- Yeah, a lot of people drag it out a bit, I think. Yeah, they're like three hours on a clay bar session. What are you doing? Well, if they're <laughs> three hours- I could make it three hours if yeah. I try. I think the biggest problem is, again, education. See how it's emulsifying and making its own lubricant? Yeah. Um, is education that the guys that are taking three hours haven't done a tar or iron session. And when they're showing you their clay bar, instead of just dirt on it, yeah. you can see the big brown chunks of tar. And they're like, you've just wrecked your paintwork. And it's yeah. took you three hours to wreck your paintwork. And destroyed your clay bar. Oh, uh, yep. You know, these are all tools and you've got to look after your tools. All right, Alan, we've decontaminated everything, these two doors. Yep. We used the AM iron, the tar, and then we clayed it. So they're perfectly naked. Now we've got lots of options to protect the paint. Mm -hmm. What are some options that we can use? Some quick and easy ones too. Like, I mean, obviously you can ceramic coat it, but what are some other options that we can do so if we're not gonna do a full on Super quick coat? and easy. Let's just talk about, you could do a detailer. So if you're done now, uh, detailer. even though it's decontaminated and you think, wow, I should really lock in for a long time. You know, maybe you're doing this over a period, a couple of weekends. So let's just get a quick detailer on there. That way, when you're coming to it next weekend, simple wash will wash off really nice and easy. Okay. Probably just a really quick tar session and then you'll be good to, you know, yeah. not everyone has time. So, quick so a quick detailer is just gonna be uh, like a two or three week protection. Yeah, two, three week. Uh, some quick detailers will last longer depending what's in them. If they're SiO2 infused, if they're ceramics, if they're, Quick Detailer Plus, so you'll probably get a good month, month and a half. Some people are getting two from ours, which is crazy. You can do a couple of applications. So you do, when it was wet, you could use it and then dry the car, and then afterwards do a dry application, and then you would get two stacks of that. So it's pretty good. It works inside as well. And then you have, uh, you have Carnuba Wax. They so then you have your wax, so we can decide first, before we do our wax or our sealant, are we gonna use a glaze? Are we gonna do any hand polishing? You know, so the customer's gotta decide, are they gonna do that? So glaze would fill. Uh, hand polish may do some sort of light abrasive cut by hand, but you'd be like yeah. He-Man. So then we've got our Carnuba waxes. Uh, there's two options from us. So the first one, standard Carnuba wax, uh, really, really nice wax. I designed that for exactly this. You're doing a weekend's work when I was a weekend hobbyist and you've only got two hours left before you got to get out of that customer's garage and you've only just finished compounding and doing your thing. You're like, no. So I had a really fast flash off wax. So the solvents flash off super quick in our premium Carnuba wax, okay. which allows me to then put some pretty cool stuff in there. So it bonds really fast. So it is not a wax your whole car, leave it buffer off type of wax. It is a, you know, wax the door, wax the door, wax the fender, and then, you know, go back and buff the door, buff the door. Okay. So maybe two, three panels at a time on off job done. Yeah. Um, and then you have the ceramic hybrid wax. So all that's happening there is we're putting some elements of the SiO2 spectrum. So no, it isn't 100% gonna be your Modesto or your okay. G-Technic in a wax. But what so it's the, like a... it's a hybrid of the two. It's not something we can make. We definitely get this outsourced when we have this. So our Canuba wax premium one, we do that because it's stuff that we can buy. We just use household stuff. Yeah. But the other one is super clever and we can't do it. But what it allows is it gives you the effects that you're gonna get from having a ceramic. So okay, it's so give it's you that. Low yeah. contact angle. Low, low contact, contact angle, super, super cool. Extends the durability of our standard. The standard Carnuba wax is still the core where we started from yeah. because everyone liked it so much. And then we added the elements for it together. So you get this high contact angle, um, you're getting all the benefits you get from a ceramic. So it doesn't add as much gloss as the premium Carnuba does because it's filled with loads of natural gloss enhancers. Mm -hmm. But you're getting the ceramic effect by just going wax on, wax off, you know? And it's giving you a longer durability. So you're six months plus with that wax. And then you've got AM Seal, which is a really, really cool and clever sealant. So the ideal scenario from that, shake the bottle up. It looks split. Lots of people contact me and say, looks like the chemical is split here. Yeah. It's got the sealant in the bottom and then a paint safe solvent on the top. 
So what you're doing is you shake that up so it all mixes together and then you've got your recipe. Spray it into a foam, just move it on the panel. No need to rub it in like you would a wax. Just put it where you need it to be. So it's super fast. It's like, mm -hmm. go, 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 go. Leave it to do its thing. What's happening? Solvents flashing off. Those heavy, uh, those heavy sealants are now falling back down into the paintwork. So if you imagine you've done a glaze session, you know, and a lot of people are like, oh, I'm using a glaze. It's going to kill the durability of my wax. This sealant's now going to go in around all that glaze and kind of like cement it where it is. So if you do two layers of it, the first one's kind of cementing the glaze in. The second one is now bonding to the cement and giving you the actual sealant layer. So that's yeah. why we say do two coats of it. Okay. So it's really cool for that person that's doing a glaze. And it does build a really nice boundary layer for putting a wax on top to get more durability if you're glazing. But, but if you're going to use our ceramic wax, don't use the sealant and straight away ceramic wax on top because two synthetics are doing two completely different things. You get horrible gassing and the next day you'll have to give it a right good buff down. Okay. It's just because all the solvents are still flashing off on the seal and then you suffocate them by putting a completely synthetic wax on top and it just suffocates it. The breathing can't happen. You do it with a carnauba wax, the solvents can still come through a natural carnauba wax and okay. disappear. Okay. Uh, so we've got two panels here. Let's test out two different products. One, I want to test out the AM seal. Yeah. What other one do you want to try out on this tour? Whatever you want. We can do uh, ceramic wax or we can do... Let's do the quick one. Let's quick do detailer. Quick nice detailer. Nice and quick for the guys yeah. at home. I want Perfect. I want quick. I want to get out of here. Nice. So we'll know. do the sealant first because we've got to wait in the drying time. Okay. And whilst it's drying, we'll demo the quick detailer. Whip them both off. Go. Let's do it. Go! Watch it! AM seal. It's all shook up. Not going to spray it onto the car. We're going to spray it into the applicator because we're going to decide where this goes. Yeah. As simple as that. I'll just leave that there. Back over to the car. We'll start from here and then we're just going to put it where I need it to be. So there's no rubbing in. Like you would a wax. I'm just going to place it where we want it to just be. Just wipe it on. And you can put this on trim. We don't have to worry about this nope. or anything. No, it'll go on to trim, no problem. Our waxes, both waxes will go on to trim as well. Without doing the white chalkiness. And then what's the waiting time on this? Uh, it depends. In here, it should dry pretty fast. On a hotter day, it would dry super fast. You want, it, you want it to dry all the way to... Yeah, uh, you want it to dry out to like, you can see it kind of going like a cloudy cream emulsion. Okay. And it'll buff off. The way you can tell is if you just wipe your finger on it and it's still smudgy, don't bother trying to buff it off. It just becomes too much work. When you get to the point with microfiber rubs and it comes off easy, it'll just come off like butter. Sweet. You missed this spot. Right here, right here, right here. Thanks. <laughs> the typical, you missed a spot. You missed a bit. From the next door neighbor. So we can either spray onto the car or we can spray it into the applicator. It depends what way you want to do it. All right. So we're just going to prime this up a little bit. I'll probably prime up the car as well. Then I'm just going to wipe this on. You smell the, the lushness that is banana greatness. I'll try to open the door so we've got a bit of a defined line. And then I'll flip this out, get the dry side. So you're going to put two layers on there? No, I'm just, well, I can do, yeah. I was just buffing off. The detail that's there, because if you were to come and feel this now, I know the guys in the camera. I can see. Well, I can see you wiping you can it. See it's it. So it's like, so silky. Like yeah. this wants to go whoop, and fall yeah. off already. So we can put a second coat on there just to just to make sure. Wherever I put the cloth, two's better than one. And it really is no extra work to do this. And you do it when drying the car; it's even better. Yeah. And I do believe it adds gloss. Some people are like, "Does how does a quick detailer add gloss?" But ours really does. It's super slick. And it works great on like your matte black vinyl and stuff because the racing guys use it all the time and it doesn't leave any stains on their vinyls. As easy as that. No dry time, no cure time on this. It's just wipe on, wipe, wipe off. Wipe on, wipe easy. off. Done. All right. It's, uh, it's dried. You can see. It's close enough. You can see how it's got this matte kind of haze on it. Yeah. Uh, so we're just going to take the towel and just start buffing it off. It should come off nice and sweet. No kind of chalky residue, no hard things going on. It's even picked up the standard wing mirror drip and it's just taking it in its stride. Um, any problems with streakiness on a dark colored vehicle or anything? No. You might get that if you're going to do little things like use our quick detailer as like a spray sealant and not dilute it down. You know, because you're an element putting um, 
or protection onto a car and just using water to rinse it off. It's the only time you might get some sort of streaking with an AM Details product. So mm -hmm. if you're gonna use our quick detailer in that way, dilute it down like at least 50-50. Beautiful, thanks for the hand. No worries. I hope you like it. E-Man should be thanking you. E-Man! <laughs> uh, so, thank you. That was some knowledge that you dropped. I mean, I really appreciate that. That no was worries. awesome. I love this and content. And I hope that you guys learned a lot too from this video. And please, if you want to pick up AM Detailed products, you can go to Car Supplies Warehouse. I'll put a link in the description below. But otherwise, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Ciao.